Hello, I'm Adriana and I'm here to present you with the gear that I use when I race fat bikes. Um, I am part of a team and we race bikes in World, Colorado. So here is a list of the gear I use when we're racing fat bikes. First I have my overall setup of protective equipment. I typically carry lip balms, reflective gear that goes on the legs or on the arms. I carry back lights for the light, a front light, and these are all typically battery powered. Uh, for emergency, I usually carry a black nylon or any other kind of brand headlamp with 200 lumens or more, if at all possible. Because we ride in very uh, brutal conditions here in Colorado, it's very cold. I typically ride with a pair of ski goggles, and the brand is irrelevant. This work, these are a pair of K2s, and they work really well for me in terms of not fogging when I sweat heavily. As a brief emergency, I typically carry a set of batteries, a few matches, duct tape uh, in a very compressed format, a chem light in case I get a stock and I need to ask for help, um, a whistle, a very small type of medical equipment, type of tank, knife, um, an Allen key, Allen wrench for my bicycle, an extra buckle, the bike pump, hand and feet warmers, a little emergency blanket in case I get stuck at night and have to overnight it in the winter time. And in case of an accident, I love to, car to, to always carry a SAM splint that hopefully you won't have to use it, but if you do, it helps for arms and legs simultaneously if you carry a way to attach it either a rope or just, um, I forget the name, but you get the, you get the idea. Uh, because I get I have tendency of getting um, blisters, I love to carry different types, different thickness of blister prevention uh, material. This is a Tegaderm film. It's a little expensive, but it works really well. It's a very thin film. Um, I carry band-aids and I carry um, skin mold that also works really well to prevent blisters. So that's in general. Oh, and I always carry a thermos that can hold up to two cups of hot liquid for about 12 hours. And I'm not very brand conscious. Any brand works just fine if you test it previously. Uh, with regards to body protection, uh, I'm going to start at the head. For my head, I typically carry a couple of merino wool beanies. They're very thin. I love them because if you get them wet, wet with sweat, you can always alternate and they dry fairly quickly. For not so cold days, I just carry a typical skiing, Nordic skiing bandana to protect your ears and prevent your sweat from coming into your eyes. Uh, for really cold days, uh, in addition to my beanies, I carry a Primal Loft um, mask that goes around your face, obviously, and prevents you from breathing very cold air. And I always carry an emergency merino wool buff that can go over your head and also protect you, you know, it's, it's a very long one, protect your neck and whatnot. Uh, some of my friends like to ride with bandanas that look, uh, I'm sorry, with back lavas that look like this. I particularly do not enjoy that. They seem very bulky and I like to be able to protect my head and my face separately. So, but that's another option. With regards to feet, are very, very important, and I have the tendency to get very, very cold feet. So I typically carry a set of very thin merino wool socks. The importance being that they're very thin and they constitute my first layer for my feet. And then on top of this, for very cold weathers, I would put a ski sock, also in merino wool, a little bit thicker. And so it will go on top of this one for very cold days. Uh, People with a lot of money, in terms of feet, they will buy a boot made by 45 North. It's a $325 pair of boots that I can't afford at the moment. And so for when the weather gets really brutal, I just ride on a typical Sorel boot. It's top, it's, it has that kind of a wool insulating material. They're a little bulky, but funny enough, they work really, really well for riding for me. Uh, for when I have to pull my bike, if, it, if, if, if it's very thick snow, I end up pushing my bike. I like to always carry an emergency pair of 
Catula crampons that you put over your boot and they give you a lot of grip during also icy conditions if you have to pull your bike. Uh, sometimes, it's, if I'm not riding with this kind of boot, it's always good to carry a pair of gaiters. If you're riding with another type of Gore-Tex shoe, you put your gaiters on top and it works actually quite well to replace this type of component on your boot, should you not decide to use this. For um, hydration system, which, sorry, I'm jumping back and forth, but for hydration system, a lot of my friends um, have purchased the Outdoor Research $30 insulating, um, water insulating system that works well for them. For me, I've decided to cut a yoga mat and make a similar insulating system. You just put a base and put some type of adhesive and then put your Nalgene bottle. It's important that you use a Nalgene bottle that has a white mouth so that your water has less tendency to freeze. And so you basically use a couple of these. These are the 900 milliliter bottles that go into your system. And then I put a little lid that I attach carefully on top of my, of my little bag and then place that whole container on my bicycle. <clears throat> now, with regards to other body parts, with regards to uh, layering for your legs, I like to use a first layer of Icebreaker Body 200 Merino wool pants that are very tight on my body, and I always carry this as a first layer. For second layer, depending on the conditions. If you have very, very cold conditions, I wear a pair of cross-country ski pants. This brand is actually works really well. It's an XC Sport brand that works really well for Nordic skiing. It's, it has a spandex on it, so they're very, very elastic, but they're also very, very warm because they're kind of fuzzy on the inside. So this becomes my second layer for cold days. For a third layer, depending on whether it's snowing or very windy, I have two options. I either go for a light pair of windbreaker and also very water resistant material. They're made by Patagonia. They're very light and what I love about this is that they have full zippers on the sides. So if it gets too cold, uh, I'm sorry, too hot, you can always add some ventilation. If the weather is colder than what this pant will allow, then I like to carry a pair of full-on Gore-Tex pants. Uh, these are made by Ancilta, an Argentinian brand, and they work really well for when it's snowing on or on that. For the top layer, it's a very similar configuration, with the exception that I like to wear a layer of Cool Max as a base layer. I like this material because it dries really quickly. So I'll wear this as a base layer, and then depending on the weather, I put a second layer of merino wool, always. Uh, I have different kinds. This is a little bit of a thicker merino wool. Depending on whether you'll go with that or with a, a not so thick icebreaker, also merino. For a third layer, I will use a little um, fleecy material, always elastic. Patagonia makes this really nice kind of um, polyurethane material. I like this because it also it dries very quickly. For a windbreaker, I typically, especially when I go uphill, I don't need very heavy jackets. So I like to use just a nylon, very light weight jacket and several brands make different different um, uh, windbreakers. I like them with a little hoodie so that if it gets windy I can always protect my head. And for super cold times and layers, I will always try to put a layer of either a down coat that will go instead of this windbreaker, I would put a layer of down coat also with a hoodie, add a combination of down with a Gore-Tex jacket. Uh, the important thing in a Gore-Tex jacket, if I'm very brand independent, is that it hopefully you'll have zippers on your on your armpits so that you can actually get some breathing going. And I like the idea of having several types of pockets to keep my um, bars and whatnot easily accessible. For hands, once again, it's all depending on the weather, but I always carry 
a pair of very thin um, gloves, um, different brands, they're Patagonia gloves, they're kind of a cool max type of material. They're very thin and I like them because they allow me to go uh, to put a second layer depending on the weather. So if it's not too cold, I'll probably write with this. If it's slightly colder, I put a layer of um, polar type of glove. And if it's extremely windy, then you can always add an extra layer of windproof, windproof kind of mitten that still gives you enough dexterity to control your brakes, but this combination is pretty, is pretty powerful. If the temperatures get too really low Fahrenheit, I highly recommend just some pair of North, uh, Alpine skiing gloves and this brand, Swami, Swanee, makes a really good powerful glove. I, I like them because still I get a lot of dexterity for to shift my gears and whatnot, and this is for really sub-zero temperatures. <clears throat> so I think I went through everything. Oh, I typically ride with a backpack. And the important thing, once again, I, it's very brand independent, but the important thing is that it, it allows to breathe in the back. So I like this kind of mesh so that my back can breathe um, because going uphill can be very energy consuming, as you can imagine. As you can imagine. That's it for my gear.